What's up guys, Pastor Rob here, back with another reaction video. As usual, I have my son Gage. What up? And as usual, we're going to be reacting to a song requested by you guys in the comment section of our video. Now keep in mind, this is not an endorsement of the song, the artist, or the genre as a whole, but an attempt to create discussion and encourage discernment while listening to music. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've never watched our videos before, what we typically do is listen to a secular song and then analyze it from a biblical perspective. For more information about us, visit our website, PastorRobReacts.com, or visit our social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can get links to all that down in the description of the video. Now, today's song was requested numerous times because of our, the state of our world at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the song Coronavirus by Tom McDonald. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's appropriate that we listen to the song and we have a real deep discussion at the end, hopefully. Uh, if the lyrics allow for that. Let's let's check it out. All right. I'm already tired of seeing those masks. I know, right? I'm tired of wearing them. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to think about this virus. Started in China, now everybody in America's hiding. There's no groceries, cause people start to panic and buy it. The shelves are empty, the ones with plenty already stockpiling. Y'all making memes, think it's funny? Wait a week till the riots. Wait a month till the only way to eat is be violent. Ooh. It's not the sickness is scary, it's all the people who whiling. The government lying, they trying to keep us calm through the sirens. You know it's for real. And all the pharmaceutical giants don't have a cure that they can sell you. So now everyone's dying. There's no vaccines or medication made that can fight it. I guess it's time to pray to God we can't rely on the science. And every Everyone around me in a mask and some gloves The stock market crashed and the banks bought the bus Tell us sanitize our hands, this will pass It's a bug, stay inside, you'll be fine Till we're trapped there for months It's a ghost town, we're in this together They're closing all the stores down We're heading for shelter It's a war now, they'll always remain This a pandemic, but we don't listen to the news Cause they lied to us for years, so how we know that this the truth? Yep. And most of us are young enough to think that we're immune So we just pass it on to people who won't survive it like you It's either worse than they're telling us or it's nothing at all But the school shut down, a ghost town in the mall They gon' quarantine the city, block the road out of Dodge Then tell us leaving our homes is actually breaking the law This is just the beginning, you know it's gotta get worse If the doctors get sick, the hospitals won't work The conspiracy theories all sound like facts, that's for sure But the fact is, we're trapped on this planet called Earth and the bleach gone, the bread gone, the water sold out The meat gone, the milk gone, wow. the pasta sold out Don't leave anything for anyone, you hoard it for yourself mm. You'd rather tell them go to hell than be a man and go in hell <laughs> It's a ghost town, we're in this together They're closing all the stores down, we're heading for shelter It's a war now, they'll always remember We're locking all our doors down, we're sticking together Hoping for the best, but we're preparing for the worst There's one thing we're not scared of, it's hard work We're up against an enemy that doesn't have a face There's no bombs we can drop, there's nowhere we can aim There's no soldiers to stop with the tank at the gates There's no cure that we've got or a pill we can take There's no food, it's been bought, the truth is we're afraid We sit inside our rooms and we pray yes. It's a ghost town, we're in this together They're closing all the stores down, we're heading for shelter Be smart, be strong, be safe. Together we will overcome. Do your part. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. The, the the guy's got a look, that's for sure. He's got yeah, for sure. He's got his he's definitely got a look, recognizable mm -hmm. as they come. Yeah, and he pulls it off too, I'll be honest. Yeah, he really does. I mean, I don't know. I couldn't pull it off. That thing in his nose was yeah. kind of giving me the creep. It looks like it hurt. <laughs> yeah. I the mean, music video was great. Yeah, fantastic. All music the shots. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. And it's interesting because it's a little bit old, not older, like long time ago, but it's a w couple weeks old. So, oh, yeah. yeah, definitely some um, foresight on his part in yeah. some of those areas. Yeah, I, I don't true. think when he released a song, at least here in our state, that we realize the gravity of the situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I really don't. So to hear it now, a couple weeks later, is like yeah, yeah, wow. he was right. Mm -hmm. He was right. He was already in tune. So wherever he's yeah. at, they were you know 
uh, experiencing some of the stuff he described before mm-hmm. we did at the very least. So yeah. um, as a teenager, how, how does this time make you feel? I hate it. It's boring. It's, <laughs> it's boring. It's boring. Being, just being stuck inside. Mm-hmm. I hate being outside. Mm-hmm. I've never been the type of person to just stay inside. Yeah. So it's so pretty irritating. Inside, just... I hate being stuck inside. Yeah. Well, the good thing is you go skating for hours a day. So yeah, but just... I can't leave the neighborhood. I can't go to the park. It's not the same. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I miss, I was telling somebody today, I miss, I miss shaking hands. Mm, Already yeah. it's been a couple, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a somewhat affectionate person. Uh, mm-hmm. I d- definitely like when I see a friend to say, Hey, what's up? And give them claps, give them a hug, let yeah. them know they're loved and that I appreciate them and that yeah. I miss them. I can't yeah. do that right now. Yeah, in I fact, feel that. just before all like everything kind of reached its, it's not at its peak yet, maybe, but before we started getting all these orders for social distancing and all that, I remember reaching my hand out to shake somebody's hand. We both kind of looked at each other like, I'm not sure we're supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. we shook hands, but we both kind of walked away like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. So like our cultures changed so much as a result of this thing, it's insane. Yeah, in, in such a quick time. Mm-hmm. social distancing is is in our vocabulary now that was never that's not in our vocabulary yeah. prior mm-hmm. pandemic all i mean the pandemic's been around of course but it's just yeah. not a word we we used a lot yeah not uh, not on like a daily basis certainly as americans we didn't think about that uh-huh. now you know i have the opposite problem i'm considered essential so i'm out I'm doing things. I'm meeting people. I'm talking to people mm-hmm. as a pastor, as a preacher, as a, as a Christian who shares the gospel. I'm all counseling people. Uh, it's 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 different for me because mm-hmm. and I have a sick wife. So now, you know, my wife's um, immune system, her blood cell, her white blood cell count right now is like 1.0. Mm-hmm. I think the average person is 4.2 to 4.6. Really? So she would have no ability to fight off this or any virus really if it came her way. Yeah. That's true. So for our family, we chose to use um, extreme caution. Uh, abundance of caution is the buzz term right now. We're using an abundance of caution where, you know, I'm taking, every time I go out, I leave, you know, I leave my shoes outside for, I never bring them in the house. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I go straight to the laundry room, take my clothes off, make sure they go into the washer. I take a shower yeah. uh, before I even say hi to any of you guys, mm-hmm. uh, which is hard for me which is really hard for me. It's just a different way, you know? And even after I've done that, I'm still wondering, man, could I have picked this up somewhere? Yeah. But let's take a look at the lyrics. So, you know, we don't have time to cover every single word because everything he said is applicable. Yeah. I mean, he, I mean, lyrically speaking, he nailed it. Not many people, artists today, especially with all these mumble rappers, that can tell a story. How do you feel about the song from a musical standpoint? Oh, fantastic. So far, we've just talked about the message. No, yeah, fantastic. I have a background in hip-hop. I produced hip-hop. I, mm-hmm. I've been around hip-hop. I can actually yeah. rap a little bit. I had, I had a season where I rapped. I like yeah. to, you know, remind people of that. Uh, so, so, so that art connects with me. Mm-hmm. significantly yeah so i respect him his, as a lyricist mm-hmm. intently because again storytelling the art of storytelling as outcast calls it <laughs> yeah i know my hip-hop history <laughs> the art of storytelling is it takes talent it's a different type of talent mumble rap takes talent yeah and, and, and it does it's its own thing like yeah. the storytelling guy or tom mcdonald probably couldn't duplicate what i don't know who's a mumble rapper lil yachty Lil Uzi, Lil, Lil Yachty, Uzi I don't know. One of those Lil, guys? I don't know. Just say Lil. Just say Lil, anything after and Lil, you'll be good. Nobody can duplicate Lil Wayne. No, yeah, I that's not necessarily mumble I rap. Don't, I don't even, he's not mumble rap. I don't know. I don't know anything he's done in the last 20 years. Yeah. But anyway, as an artist, yes, definitely good. Beat was good. It was meant to be uh, catchy and sort of poppy. It was mm-hmm. meant to be uh, to appeal to a wider yeah, audience. Yeah, definitely. Um, the repeating chorus. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of the singy song. Again, it was meant to be an anthem. It was meant to like get people excited and charged up and and ready to be in this together, as you said in the chorus. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I thought that was good. It was almost a PSA, for example. You yeah. Know? Even at the end, it says "Stay in, stay home, stay safe," something like that. Yeah. Uh, so he was doing his part to help, which I, which I think is is pretty cool. Um, but it's interesting. He said. Uh, Gosh, there's so much he said. You already know where to start, man. <laughs> the shelter's empty. The ones who plenty are already stockpiling. So the people who have the uh, money and mm-hmm. the riches to stockpile or probably already have an abundance. Yeah. That's one thing he pointed out. Y'all making memes, thinks it's funny. Wait a week till the riots. It's coming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It will happen. There's already stuff happening right now. And again, uh, from what I understand, we're at the very beginning of this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, only a couple weeks into, you know, really, really hitting the news and becoming really public um wait a month till the only way to eat is be violent and he touches on that later he says you'd, you'd rather tell him to go to hell than be a man 
and go help. So mm-hmm. really the degradation of society is what he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Society's true colors are starting to come out. Like yeah. a lot of greed and stuff is being yeah. exposed. I've already seen crazy stuff, man. A, a friend of mine was at Sam's and some lady wanted to, they were allowing uh, a packs of paper towels mm-hmm. and toilet paper, you know, one per customer. And Sam's has got, you know, the big packs, I don't know, yeah. 16 or so. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they said, and they, th- she wanted to take more than one pack, and they're like, no, you can't. So she started going nuts in there, and they had to mm-hmm. call the police. She fought with the officer, ended up getting hauled off to jail. Mm. Yeah. Hauled off to jail over some paper towels. Mm-hmm. So this goes back to something we've discussed on, on some of our other videos, and it's, it's sort of uh, what the Bible talks about man being fallen, that, they're, that their natures are corrupt and prone towards sin. Mm-hmm. And so like our natural desire... Is sin rather than righteousness, and r- righteousness, as defined by obeying God's law, is is what we're talking about when we when we say righteous law perfectly as well. That that's the definition of righteousness or being righteous is o- obeying God's law perfectly. Um, and so for me, like America's always had this sort of thin veneer of decency. We've always been sort of a Christian like uh, country. Yeah. Christian like exactly mm-hmm. Christian like country so we've we've had Christian morality um and morality's always had a high value in our in our country yeah um you hear it in, from the pulpits it's always you know from preachers always about behavior rather than the gospel of grace because mm-hmm. uh, they want people to look a certain way and act a certain yeah. way you know take your hat off when you walk in a building mm-hmm. you know do all this stuff uh and that veneer's getting thinner and thinner yeah that as it has been for a long time anyways, but when these kind of events happen, the, the veil comes off, so to speak, and now we see the worst in people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and there are great people out there, too. Do not get me wrong. We got nurses, all of our first responders, all those people. Big thank you for putting yourself in, in, in that, in the, on the front lines. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, some people are, are doing it for selfish motives, whether it be a paycheck or security or... Uh, pride to be able to say that they're doing it, uh, but I'm grateful that they're doing it either way. And some people are doing it for the glory of God because they have a, a Christian worldview and they they believe that by doing these things they're honoring God. Mm-hmm. Uh, so another another line he says, uh, I, I like this. He touches on this a couple times in, in the song. He says, uh, "The government's lying. They're trying to keep us calm through the sirens. We know it's for real." And he also says later in another verse, he says this. This is a pandemic, but we don't listen to the news because they lied to us for years. So how we know that this is truth? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. And then he says in another place, it's either worse than they're telling us or it's nothing at all. Mm-hmm. The conspiracy theories all sound like facts. That's for sure. He, he's right. Like we're watching news. We're kind of going, hmm, what's real? Like the fake news is the big thing right now. And mm-hmm. there's always been fake news. It's not, it's not new. Like fake news has always been around. It's just yeah. kind of being called out. Sometimes it's used unfairly and it's really not fake news. I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, but interestingly, people started this hashtag called film your hospital. Mm-hmm. And what they're doing right now is going to these hospitals that they're, so they're, they're, they're claiming on the news that these hospitals are overrun and, and, and mm-hmm. just people are spilling out everywhere and they don't have enough beds and there's all this panic. Yeah. Um, and that could be true for some. Do not get me wrong. I, I mean, there's some places, uh, some cities had actually uh, reduced the hospitals, uh, shut some hospitals down, and now they don't have enough hospitals mm-hmm. to handle something like this should it reach a certain height. So maybe they're just getting prepared. But either way, on the news, they're, they're saying it like, everybody's dying in here and all this stuff's happening. All these people are lined up Mm -hmm. and these people are going to film the hospitals. Mm -hmm. One dude went all over California and I filmed like 12 or 13 of them. And he were walked they, up. Were they as bad as the, he went into the lobbies again? I, you know, I'm I'm treating this with a grain of salt. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, like, of course. I'm, not, I'm not saying this is true. I'm just saying what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. And he would go in the lobbies and film the lobby. And I mean, there is not a soul. <laughs> Some of the people were telling him or and other people in interviews that, we're actually not that busy. In fact, we're less busy because people aren't coming out of fear of getting the virus. Yeah, and which is understandable. Sure, and, and some cities have deemed um, all elective surgeries uh, that aren't necessary to have that you, you shouldn't go do those. Yeah, makes so, sense. Makes yeah. perfect sense. So they're losing money on that traffic, mm-hmm. and they're spending money getting prepared for a potential, either getting prepared or, or and again, the conspiracy theory, that because that, he referenced conspiracy, is that they're... They're squeezing. They're trying to get funding from the government by claiming that they're overwhelmed. Again, I'm, uh, mm. I'm not. I'm not pushing these conspiracy theories. I'm just. I'm just sharing them. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of them. There, people are saying that it's a hoax. P- 
people are saying that this is really a way uh, to hide the 5G networks mm-hmm. and that 5G is the radiation is causing the sicknesses. Um, people are saying the, the government is trying to force vaccinations. Uh, people uh-huh. are saying we're actually at war with another country and they're hiding it under this disguise of, uh, of, of, uh, of an illness. Mm-hmm. Um, people are believing that we're getting prepared for a holocaust. Like, like they're, they're kind of referencing, you know, Germany and they're showing like the concentration camps and how they prepared and, you know, they just brought in the Navy ships and they're saying that they're going to load us up on these Navy ships. And, mm-hmm. uh, and there's so many, I can't even list them all, but yeah, I'm not ready to buy into any of them yet. Yeah, some like, of those sound a little ridiculous. But you never know, you know, 9-11 was an inside job. <laughs> we, we never went to the moon. <laughs> yeah, we never went to the moon either. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we didn't. But uh, if you ever research... Yeah, there's always compelling evidence there's hey, that's a great way to you said it better than i could have I, exactly there's always compelling evidence when you read these things and start to to learn these things these conspiracies and look into them you go hmm possibly maybe yeah. you know i could see how they see that yeah if you're being reasonable i can see how they see that and we're we're reasonable as you can tell yeah of course there are unreasonable conspiracies like the whole last thursday thing what you don't know the last thursday theory no <laughs> Should I look this up? Um, I don't know. Well, apparently the universe was created last Thursday, and we were all put here with fake memories to fill in the blank between last Thursday and whenever we were born. Just when I thought things couldn't get weirder. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I tell you, though, speaking of conspiracy theories, me, me and your mom watched Doomsday Preppers the other day, and I'm going, I thought these people were crazy, and I'm jealous. Now I'm going, man, these guys are smart. Wait, what were they preparing for? It's just it's a TV show called Doomsday Preppers, Preppers where these people prepare for uh, the Doomsday for some sort oh. of. Uh, they were he was talking about a global a global economic collapse, which is happening right now. He said mm. we're prepared for that because what will happen is riots. He talked about just mm. like Tom yeah. McDonald talked about riots. So he, they're prepared for that. They're fortifying their home. They got all this food. They got all this stuff. They got toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have toilet paper. Yeah. For crying out loud, these guys are prepared. So that even those crazy people seem like uh, yeah. they know what's going on. But only only time will tell the actual truth. Yeah. Only time will tell the truth. Hopefully, we can look back in this video and kind of chuckle at things. Yeah. Uh, we may look back and go, "Man, we didn't. We were naive at that time." As long as we don't ever get hit by like a birdemic, I think we're good. <laughs> birdemic. <laughs> hey, that's my boy. That is a riff that's, tracks that's a, reference. Yeah. Link in the description. You got to check that out. Yeah. Birdemic, the best riff tracks episode ever. Mm-hmm. Um. So okay, a couple more, couple more lines, and then we'll end the video. So he says, uh. Uh, now the pharmaceutical giants don't have the cure that they can sell you. So now everyone's dying. There's no vaccines and medication made that can fight it. I guess it's time to pray to God. We can't rely on the science. Mm. That's a that's a pretty heavy line. Yeah, that's a pretty heavy line. I'm not an anti-science person by any means. Yeah, of course not. Real, real the real scientific method. I'm not I'm not anti that. I think that's great. Medical science has made some major uh, advancements, but it 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 um. It really does bring to mind that it's times like these that people's false senses of, of security, they vanish. Mm-hmm. People put a lot of trust in man. They really do. They, they trust their government. They trust uh, uh, food stamps and government handouts to get them through. We're getting $1,200 mm-hmm. for this thing. And like I know, I know a lot of people that $1,200 ain't going to help them in any form or fashion mm-hmm. at all. This ain't... It does not. That's not going to help us. Yeah. And uh, so we trust our government to help us. Um, we invent new schemes to extend our lives by moments. And we invent medicines and we do these things to to extend our our lives. Or from our perspective, we're extending our lives. When the, the reality is, man is fallible and death is inevitable. Mm-hmm. God assigns a day. The Bible says it's appointed a man wants to die, and then comes judgment. Those are two facts in life. That 100 percent. Of people, ten out of ten. You talk about a scary statistic. That's way scarier than the you know, couple percent right now that's dying from from this uh, pandemic. Mm-hmm. Is that a hundred percent? Ten out of ten people will die. Everybody you know, everybody you've loved will die someday and stand before God. Um, and that's the most important thing, which I think we should be getting prepared for. Uh, let's see, where's this? Even you know, even even towards the end of the song, um, he says, "The truth is, we're afraid. We sit inside our rooms and pray." Mm-hmm. Now, 
that's a heavy line. Like that's it's true. Like there's a lot of fear right now. Um, Christians are everybody's afraid. I mean, we're there's this. He talks about an invisible enemy in here. It, it, we're, we're we're warring against this invisible enemy, which we always have. We not, battle not against flesh and blood, principalities, rules of the air, darkness, and all that. We battle against. Uh, there's a spiritual battle going on, and the reality is, I don't know. Even if you don't like it, prayer is effective. God hears the prayers of a righteous person. Um, and I know the first thing everybody's saying is, why does God allow this sort of stuff to happen? God has his reasons. I don't know them. Mm-hmm. I really don't. We know uh, suffering is helpful. It produces endurance in us. But what I do know, God does not promise that you will, will avoid suffering. I know a lot of people think that. That yeah. Well, if he, he, the Bible says you know, people shouldn't suffer. Well, no, actually. It, yeah, he it, never promises well-being. No, he practically Actually, guaran- quite the opposite. Yes, he guarantees you'll suffer. Suffering is, is part of, of, of life in this fallen world mm-hmm. yeah. where sin exists. See, heaven is a place where that stuff doesn't happen because sin doesn't exist there. Mm-hmm. So there's no suffering there at all. Actually, most people in the Bible experience suffering. Mm -hmm. We know that. Actually, everybody. I can't think of maybe Jesus. Well, Jesus suffered. Jesus suffered on the cross. Yeah. I don't. I. I don't know. There. If if there is a character that didn't suffer, that'd be you know there'd be very few. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They'd be in the minority that didn't suffer in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. Um, But for us, we have the benefit of hindsight. We look back at these people in this in the Bible and we hear their stories. We go well. Yeah, they, we see a little glimpse, you know, a couple paragraphs of their story, and it looks like it happens really fast. Mm-hmm. Some of the events are really, really long, mm-hmm. really long. Yeah. Long, long, long seasons of suffering before before they get their quote-unquote breakthrough, before God reveals uh, what the reasons were. Mm-hmm. And we get to look back and go, man, you know, they made it through. That's pretty easy. We mm-hmm. don't have the, in our own lives, we don't have that benefit of hindsight. We're in the middle of the story still. Mm-hmm. And as the story continues, we can eventually look back and go, ah, now I see why. Yeah. Could it be God's judgment? I don't know. Could be. Could it be God purifying uh, a people? Could be. Uh, could it be? Um, could it be Him exposing our idols? It could be all sorts of things. Could it be Him uh, correcting us? I don't know. I, I have no idea because those are a lot of the some reasons that you see suffering in the Scripture. Mm-hmm. Um, what the Bible does say about suffering. In James, it says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So we're called we're called to see suffering as joyful. That's not a that's not a a feeling of elation, like we're not skipping around like SpongeBob mm-hmm. chasing a yeah. uh, what are those little things he tries uh, to catch jellyfish. jellyfish. Yeah, yeah, we're not doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, what he says is count it all joy, which means put it in the category of something joyful. Mm-hmm. You may not feel that way, yeah, but understand this: that because of this, it produces something steadfastness, and then steadfastness having its full effect makes you perfect and complete. Ultimately lacking nothing so so suffering and trials are a blessing because once we get through them it's improved us in some way or fashion mm-hmm. but by god's standard um and for us christians we're called to not be anxious uh philippians 4 6 through 7 do not be anxious about anything but mm-hmm. in all things through prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to god and the peace of god will guard your heart and your mind in christ jesus mm-hmm. it's a, it's a beautiful verse it says, he's telling us, do not be anxious. Instead, pray. That's what Tom McDonald just said. Pray. And when we present our request to God, it promises that we will receive the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. It's beyond understanding. Mm-hmm. That's the promise of, of God from his, from his word. Um, Jesus says in, in John 14, 27, he says, peace I leave with you, peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Mm-hmm. So that peace is this, that, that we know death is inevitable, whether it be from a virus, or from old age, and we know, again, it's the point of man wants to die and then comes judgment. We know that we'll stand before God on judgment day, and mm-hmm. we'll have to give an account for our lives. So on that day, for you, will you appeal to your uh, unrighteous works, say, you know, I, I I don't have nothing to offer him. Like any like everything bad you've done outweighs your good, even if that was possible. Even your good stuff, the Bible says God doesn't even accept that. It's not. It doesn't have value to him. 
Or are you going to stand before God found in the righteousness of Jesus that he offers to us on the cross? That's what the cross is about. He, he died willingly on the cross, paid the penalty for our sin. So he, he, my sin went on him. And then his righteousness becomes ours. It's credited to our account. So, so we don't automatically become these uh, perfect people. Mm-hmm. But ju- judicially speaking, in, in the court of God's law, uh, that we, we, we are perfect on, on record. We are righteous. We have the same perfection as, as Jesus earned and has. Um, but if you're trusting Christ right now, this is something to give you peace. Uh, from Romans chapter 8, 38 to 39, he says, uh, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's your peace. So if you need some peace, that's your peace. Rest in that. And hopefully on the other side of this pandemic, we'll see God's work in that. We'll see why and, and, and what the reasons were. I don't know. It's going to be different for each of us, uh, but I'm going to trust him more than I trust my own uh, fickle emotions. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the best way to behave, and that's the best way to think. And because of that, I have the peace of God. I have peace during this trial because I know, as the Bible says, all things work to good for those who are in, uh, all things work to good for those who are in Christ Jesus and called according to his purpose. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, even death is good for the believer. Because we get to be in heaven. No sin. Yep. No sickness. No pandemics or birdemics. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, anyway, that's it for us. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any last thoughts? Any last thoughts? Um, just stay safe. Stay safe. Stay home. Wash your hands. Uh, protect your family. Do all that stuff. Hopefully, we'll get through this. Now, on the other side, hopefully, we watch this video and it's cheesy. Hopefully, we're showing our uh, kids what people thought at this time. <laughs> you can use us as an example. Uh, hopefully, we can look at this song by Tom McDonald as just sort of a time capsule of a couple weeks or mm-hmm. a month of, yeah. of time that we had to experience. So, anyway, that's it for us. If you like it, hit like, uh, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, hit us up on social media, all that good stuff. And until the next video, may the light of the Lord continue to shine on you. Mm -hmm. Peace. Peace.